Today is Saturday, May 28th. It is Memorial Day weekend, mm -hmm. right? We got a few things to do today, but one of them is a quick harvest. We planted black beauty squash, and that's what these are, including this gigantic one right here. Um, that one you missed. I missed it when I harvested two days ago. You can see behind us here, we have the old sorghum patch that was behind the pigs from last year. You can see just how much green is around us. The soil that we're creating with those worms that we found as we were planting all of these crops here in the spring is definitely making a huge difference. And it's very comfortable in here, yeah. especially right now. Last weekend, we installed an archway leading into this area. That was really simple. Basically, it's just a cattle panel and we have four T-posts on each one of the corners. And we also have the cattle panel attached to the fencing itself, so it's nice and secure. What do you think we'll plant there? Um, possibly Lufa. Oh, that's right, and actually we have Lufa. The Lufa that's actually starting to take over something very similar in between the blackberry beds. Yeah, and it's you, the same thing. Same thing, and yeah. you can see that it's growing really, really well there. One of the things you guys are watching today is the video on apricots and aprims. And in that video, we talked about the fact <laughs> that birds <laughs> were not attacking the fruit. Unfortunately, they found it, which is not shocking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether or not we're gonna have anything left after the birds devoured all of those. Fortunately, there was only a couple dozen on there. Birds are attacking everything. Yeah, we even have the sorghum patch, and I don't know whether or not it's the curved bill threshers digging holes or if it's ground squirrels digging holes, but they're digging holes all over the place in there, and what's happening is they're digging up the sorghum. So it's not bunnies getting in there and eating the sorghum. They're just digging it up and trashing the place. The turkeys that are all going to their new homes this weekend, so mm -hmm. we're gonna have folks here today, and they're picking up most of them today and then I think a couple more on Monday. One of the things for us this time of year is fertilizing, and you've been doing that this week. Yeah, I got the whole front done, so all the guavas, loquats, citrus, all the mulberries on that side by the chicken run. I got the ones up here in the front and also the trees all in the back. Oh yeah, I did all the grapevines too and all the potted plants. 
So what were we using for the grapevines as far as fertilizer is concerned? I did the composted chicken manure. And we also used that on the citrus, correct? On the citrus and the loquats and the guavas up front. So those are all evergreens. Well, not the grapevines, but the front trees are evergreens. So the high nitrogen content in the chicken manure seems to be working really well, mm -hmm. as opposed to the pig manure, which we use kind of everywhere else. Yeah. The composted pig manure. Yeah. We've got a couple things that we want to get done today that are kind of lagging before we get into our summer kind of shutdown time frame because we're that's right around the corner. You guys know we have two goats so far. We have Lily and Rosie, um, both mini Nubians, and then we have one additional, her name is Violet, that should hopefully be joining us here in the next week or two. She's weaning right now. So we needed to get at least one more little house for them to sleep in. Now, we don't know for sure whether or not they'll share, so we figure at the very least, we've got two separate spots for them to get in and out of the rain and wind. Obviously the rain won't be very often, <laughs> but we get wind every day and this will give them a cozy place to sleep. One of the questions we get asked a lot is how, when, and with what do we fertilize our fruit trees? We mentioned a bit earlier this morning, but Lori started our fertilizing this past week. We're probably about halfway through now. And with the exception of our evergreens, where we have our citrus and guava, all of our stone fruit are actually fertilized with composted pig manure. Now you guys probably know we run pigs for folks every fall through spring, so we just wrapped up. And one of the things we utilize is their waste. You saw what I was doing here today, it's pretty simple. We have about 50 to 60% wood chips in here along with pig manure. Now this is a fairly fresh pile, so we have a lot of large chunks of poop. <laughs> but you can see how simple it is with the tractor to just turn that quite easily. And then this will eventually turn into what you saw Lori putting onto all of our fruit trees. Now we talk a lot on the channel here about creating soil here in the desert. And one of the ways that we can do that here on the farm, as opposed to importing it directly and knowing exactly what's in it is creating it ourselves. And one of the ways we do that is what you see behind me here. So eventually this will be around the trees. We'll seed this with worms from the sorghum patch that was behind the pigs last year so that we're transplanting plenty of worms every single time we fertilize our trees. Again, you get the idea of kind of that circle of animals, pressure on the land, utilizing those resources that most consider a waste stream, putting them back into the cycle to continue the creation of soil and more importantly, food production here on the farm.
it was great. Had some friends here, Kiefer, Kayla, Bentley. Thank you guys for helping us out. That was fantastic. We were able to get all of our spring beds put to sleep. Now we talk a lot about building soil here and I have to tell you, if you're not building soil, you're just not doing it right in my opinion. I, I think all of us out there, especially if you wanna have beds like this, but even fruit trees, it's so critical that we're continuing to build soil. One of the major issues that we have really across the world is a loss of topsoil. And we can see it occurring here in the desert, which is very common. And obviously everything we do here, we're trying to keep that. You guys saw us doing a couple things a little bit different. Um, one of them is we did add chicken manure and that is raw chicken manure that we added to these beds. The idea is that will break, continue to break down over the summer as the radishes do the same and encourage the soil life including worms, which we will be adding into here once you start to pack down just a little bit and we make sure that they're gonna be nice and comfy. One of the thing that was cool to see is we have a couple of volunteers that were in the middle of all that daikon. We had a purple lettuce that we found in there that was a complete volunteer from the first season and also a green lettuce that is a volunteer. Hopefully we'll get a chance to have those go to seed and continue to spread seed because we love our volunteers here on the farm. It is starting to warm up. Yeah. Not not surprising because we're heading into June. Yeah. But we didn't hit like crazy hot weather at the end of May, which is nice. And we start out June in the 90s. We took your guys' advice when it came to the basil and we started drying that in the outbuilding itself. And this will give you an idea of what it looks like after what, about a week or so? One more time, just wanna encourage you guys soil building. You can see what we're already starting to see here with our soil building projects and some of the growth that we're seeing, and more importantly, the production. Obviously, we're holding the basil here, but we were able to harvest some wonderful beets that we planted just a couple of months ago. And so that was a great harvest to get today. And then of course, you guys saw the squash earlier this morning. So seeing things like that gets me really excited about the soil, and then of course, the production. So just wanna thank you for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. We would love to see you on a regular basis as we establish this new functioning farm here in the Arizona desert. Questions or comments, those go in the comment section down below. And our Amazon shop, I'll leave a link down in the description. That is a free painless way to help support the channel. If you start with that link, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here. So just wanna thank you for joining us today and remind you if we can farm on the edge of nowhere. So can you. Actually wet and kind of moldy because I think there, is there mushrooms there? Or, oh no, those are actually just oranges. Okay, sit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna squat. You, you better not. You better <laughs> sit your butt down. <laughs> you made me sit in the wet mold. You're sitting too. You're so aggressive. I know. <laughs> Don't sit up with your butt in the camera. I know, it'll be wet. Yeah. Although we kind of do want your butt in the camera. No, if I'm your not. butt is in the camera, you know how many views we'll get with your butt in the camera? <laughs> Come on, honey, it's for the channel. It's no, for the channel. not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have hands to pull my hair back. Are you petting me? I, I, I am. <laughs> Is that weird? I would say that I'm just trying to pull your hair back. I'm not, not trying to pet you. You were, <laughs> you were petting me. No, I'm not. I don't. That's how we pet our goats. <laughs> uh, I'm more into heavy petting. Just hold these for a second. Uh oh. <sighs> <laughs> At least this is better than holding your purse. 